May I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It is hard to imagine the true horror of crucifixion. In fact, the Gospel writers do not dwell on the details simply because they knew their first century Palestinian audience knew the horrors all too well. I cannot imagine the trauma, the utter devastation wrought upon those disciples who witnessed the entire ordeal. Mary Magdalene, John, the beloved disciple, and Mary, his own mother. Mary endured what no mother should ever have to endure, watching her son tortured to death. I find myself tonight wondering what she and the other disciples did after they had taken down his body and laid it in the tomb. They had to go back to where they were staying. They had to do something. They had to go back numb with grief, sick with pain and sadness that probably felt like it would never, could never end. Eventually, too tired to cry or to wail anymore, sleep would have set in eventually, perhaps. Maybe not. I would venture that there is not one of us here tonight who has not experienced some form of grief or loss, profound sadness, or perhaps those areas of ourselves where we are most broken. If we are honest, there are those parts of ourselves we try and hide because we are so sure that they are too ugly too broken, too shameful to be seen by others. In vain, we may even try to conceal them from God, but to do so is futile. God knows every part of our hearts, and there is nothing too broken, nothing too shameful for God. There are many aspects of Jesus's redemptive suffering and death that we could meditate upon this evening. Indeed, one could fill volumes with them. Many have. But what I want to say to you tonight is this. God in Jesus, God who by virtue of the Incarnation experienced the full extent of humanity. God himself has experienced utter brokenness, sadness, and even somehow utter abandonment. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus cried out on the cross. But instead of despairing, you and I can take comfort in this. Yes, we may take comfort and find hope in the fact that God knows our suffering. He knows our brokenness. He knows our every sadness. In Jesus, God actually meets us in our suffering, so that suffering and death do not have the final word. Brokenness and death are the ultimate consequences of sin, but this incarnate God takes upon himself and into himself every one of our sins. And by that suffering and death, he atones for us and reconciles us to God. Friends, we and our sins 
are buried in the tomb of Christ. Whatever burdens we carry with us on this night, whatever brokenness we hold, whatever sins we are afraid to confess, we may leave them with Christ in that tomb because we know that sin and death do not have the final word. Christ's death defeats death. All the effects of human sin that Christ takes into his body, he takes to the gates of hell and he prevails. Our suffering and loss are redeemed. Sin and death are put to flight. He conquers them and opens for us the gates of eternal life so that you and I, all of us, may share with him in new and resurrected life. So I invite you in the sure and certain hope of that life, that light, that victory over sin and death, to come forward now. You see the stations where you can light candles. I invite you to come forward, take a candle, light it, offer to God your prayer, those things that weigh on your heart, trusting and knowing that he has already borne them. Leave them in this tomb. Leave them with Christ in that tomb, knowing that night heralds the dawn and that life with the resurrected Christ awaits you and I. Amen.